They literally have cars leased. They literally have apartments that their parents co-signed on that they have nothing to do with their success. I want you to understand something. I didn't buy a Corvette until I hit my half a million. I need you to understand this. To you, it could be 80,000. To you, it could be saving $20,000 in your bank account. It doesn't really matter to me like what the standard is. What matters is that you hit what you say you're gonna hit before you spend the money. The, high, the highest ROI that you'll ever get, if you care about money and, and ROI, I why would you just say What's going on, Andy Elliott. In this video, I want to talk about five money mistakes that you want to avoid in your 20s. And obviously, I'm 44 years old, okay? So if you're in your 20s, that means you could probably be my son or my daughter. Pretty crazy, right? So what I would say is that like, I'm like, going to have this conversation to like my 20-year-old self because I was once 20 years old. And I'm going to tell you something right now. I feel like we're in an era right now where we don't have very good leaders, okay? So a lot of people just aren't guided in the right direction. So I just thought, you know, I could probably give you a 100 things that you could do with your money. But what if I could just boil it down to five simple things? that I was positive that would totally paradigm shift your life, okay? Take you from here to here. Um, I'm really successful. I made a lot of money when I was younger. A lot of money fell through my fingers because I didn't do it right. So I want to give you guys some good money-making ideas and ways that you can actually scale and grow with money, whether you have a little or a lot. And I want to take exactly what I would do if I was in my 20s. So if you're watching this, grab a pen, grab a piece of paper. I'm going to run through five simple, quick things. And if you do these things, I promise you, you'll be guaranteed success. And matter of fact, success is at a very high level. And instead of waiting until you're 40 years old to be successful, or even 30, you could do it in your 20s. Are you ready? Grab pen, grab piece of paper. Let's start. All right, guys. So number one is going to be don't put all your money in one account. It's going to be this simple, okay? So I'm just going to pretend that you have $1,000. Take $1,000. That's what you have in your bank right now. And I want you to remove 400 bucks of it. And I want you to put it into another account. One that isn't a close bank. One that you don't have a debit card to. Maybe just open a savings account. It doesn't matter, but it needs to be a separate account. Because I'm going to tell you something, right? Once you start making 10 grand, 20 grand, 30 grand, you start making more money. What happens is that people see that money starting to accumulate. And then you know what they do? They get comfortable, they slow down, and that chip on your shoulder, what made you want to make money, you actually, because you think the more money you'd have, like the more hungry it would make you, it's actually the opposite. The God of this generation is comfort. So when people see that money starts to stack, what they do is that they get comfortable, they stop working hard, they lose the chip on their shoulder, and all of a sudden they find themselves being broke and being complacent. So what I want you to do, I want you to take every freaking dollar that you can physically outside of your bills, and I want you to put it into another account. Now, you could go and let's say your uh, company that you work for, let's say you're on automatic deposit, right? Like, so they automatically take your check and they deposit it into your bank. You could say every month, I want you to take $2,000 and I want you to put it in this account, take $2,000, put it in that account, and then the rest put in this account. They'll do that for you. They'll take care of it. And if you're disciplined, and that's how I like to do it, so I don't even have to think. Or you could say, take 50% of my check, move it over here, 50% over here. Or at the end of the month, right now, I'm just giving an example. Let's say you have $1,000 in your bank. I said, remove 400 of it. Maybe you put 600 of it. The deal is the money's always in that savings account. You can always go over there and get it. It's not like it disappeared and it's gone. But you don't want to go get it. Your goal is to put your back against the wall. Okay, so I'm gonna give you two tricks. Number one, if you put your back against the wall, you put all the chips on the table, you literally take all the money that you have in your bank account after you pay your bills and you get rid of it, it makes it hard to live, it makes it uncomfortable, it makes it like stressful, like God, man, you know, all my money's gone. No, your money's not gone, your money's over there. It's not gone, no one took it, okay? It's a mind trick. You put your back against the wall, you keep a chip on your shoulder, now you go make more money. And you know what you do? You keep working hard, you keep working hard, you move the money. You work 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 hard, you move the money. You're in your 20s, you look up two years later, son of a bitch, you look over, you got $250,000 sitting in the bank. Look, I'm a broke person with money. I run a nine-figure business, I'm literally broke. I literally operate as I'm broke. Now, am I physically broke? No, I'm not broke, but here I feel like I'm broke, okay? Even to this day in my 40s, I take the money and I move it out. I take the money and I move it out. I take the money and I move it out. And that's what you gotta do. And I would tell you, if you're in your 20s right now, I would tell you that I would wanna operate no matter how much money you have, no matter how much you're making, even if you're broke. I want you to understand, broke people are the most dangerous people because they just keep fighting because they're hungry, because they don't wanna stay in that position. So if you can keep that feeling all the time, and get that money the hell out of there, then guess what? You'll have that chip on your shoulder, you'll have your back against the wall, which means you'll perform your best, and you'll stay hungry 
and most people in this world, they, they become asleep. Being hungry, staying starving for success is one of the greatest ways to kick everybody's ass. Move the money, get it out of there. Whether it's a couple hundred bucks, whether it's a couple thousand bucks, whatever that means to you, take any excess leftover money, get it gone and then keep rinse and repeating doing this every month and it'll get you really far. I would definitely do that when I, if I was in my 20s. Now, let's get to number two. All right, number two is gonna be taking jobs to learn instead of earn. So I want you to understand this, okay? Who you become determines what you're worth. Who you become determines what you're worth. So I know a lot of people right now, they're looking around for the job that pays the most money. They're like, which one pays me the most money? And then what happens is they don't end up working for a great leader. They don't end up working for a, a company that's gonna scale and grow them and self-develop them. And then what happens is after three years, you earn all this money, you probably end up blowing it anyways because you're younger. And then what happens is you don't have the skill, you don't have security where if you had to start over today, you know, like you couldn't rebuild what you had back. And so you just don't develop into becoming someone great and you don't learn enough but you earned, but you didn't learn. I would tell you earning is great, but learning is better. If you can find a mentor, if you can find someone that will literally teach you everything they know, that will create you to be a great person, that will literally build you to be a badass leader. Look, th th there's a scarcity in the world right now, okay? And scarcity creates value, and if you create more value, you make more money. And the scarcity is leadership, the scarcity is sales, and if you could find somebody over here and you made less money, and I want you to get paid a lot, but this person paid less money, but they were a better leader. They would invest in you more. They would teach you more. They would, they would help you develop into the person you always want to become. They would max out your potential. But over here, this person didn't do any of these things, but you just could work, 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 and just make a lot of money. Well, over here, you make more money, but you never become. And over here, you know what I'm saying? Like, like I said, you make more money, you never become. But over here, you become, but you didn't make as much money. This person over here makes 20 times more than that person guaranteed in five, six years. So five, six years, who's really further? This person. Why? Because they found someone, they went for the earn, right, over here, and over here they went for the learn. So I want you to understand that if you can find a learn and earn, that's amazing, but most of the time they don't exist, okay? So the best paying jobs sometimes don't teach you the most. In, the, in, in the, this world, and especially this era that we live in right now, there's a lot of people that are really um, interested in developing young people. Okay, they really wanna help them become great leaders, like me, you know, and, I, and you don't have to work for me, I'm making a point. You find someone that will, that will teach you, they'll, they'll develop you, they'll train you, they'll take you in like, you know, like me, I'm 44, I said if you're in your 20s, like you're my son, like you're my daughter, like I want you to be the greatest, I want you to be the best. I actually give a shit about you, I care about you. These are the people that you wanna be around. You spend two years with these people, it's better than 20 years just out there earning. Okay, does that make sense? All right, let's get on to number three. All right, number three, so make a goal when it's okay to spend money, and because you've hit a goal and a target and, and, and a quota, then you can spend the money. But if you don't hit the goal, if you don't hit the quota, if you don't hit the target, if you don't hit the, the, the thing that you said you were gonna hit, you can't spend it. Let me give you an example. So I, I wanted to buy a Corvette when I was in my 20s, okay? And I said, or I was 20 years old, I bought a brand new Corvette off the showroom for. When I was 19 years old, I said until I made 500 grand, I wasn't going to buy a Corvette. Corvette was like $80,000 back then. And then I was like, but I need, I need to hit a half a million dollars to do it. Well, when I was 19 years old, 18 I hit, I hit 125 at 19 years old I hit 225 and then at 20 I hit a half a million I want you to understand some I didn't buy a Corvette until I hit my half a million I need you to understand this to you it could be 80,000 to you it could be saving $20,000 in your bank account it doesn't really matter to me like what the standard is what matters is that you hit what you say you're gonna hit before you spend the money and I see a lot of people right now they just earn and spend earn and spend earn and spend and they never have to hit anything to, to spend. So maybe you say, I'm not going to buy a new house until I hit $50,000, right? Like cash in the bank. And then I'm going to go buy me a $225,000 house and I'm going to put 30,000 of that down. But I'm not going to buy that new house. I'm not going to get out of this apartment until I hit, hit you know, 50,000 cash. Does that make sense? So you guys got to understand this, that setting a goal that you're not going to spend any money until you hit that thing right, and make it big, stretch yourself, don't make it easy, and then when you hit it, you actually feel like it's a reward to do it, and then you just raise it again, and then you can do that again, and you raise it again, you do it. I still do that to this day. We're not gonna do this until this happens, and if I don't do that, if I don't hit that thing, then I don't do that. By the way, most people just go ahead and do it anyway. It's like, well, man, I got close enough, I'm gonna do it. No ways. You either hit it or you don't. 
And if you don't hit it, then you can hit it the next month. And when you hit it, then you can buy that thing or you can spend that money. So I just wanna tell you, set high standards, set high goals, set high stipulations. But I'm just giving an example. Let's say you wanna buy a pair of shoes and they're 500 bucks. And I know this sounds silly because it's shoes, but let's say you're like, dude, I'm not gonna freaking buy um, a, these $500 pair of shoes until I get a $10,000 take home check after taxes. I'm not gonna do it. So until that check's in my hand, I'm not buying those shoes. Well, dude, now I'm motivated because I wanna go freaking hit that and it's not even about the money, it's because I want those shoes. Does that make sense? So it teaches you to chase and hit and then get rewarded. Most people want instant gratification, which means if I make 500 bucks, I'll go buy the $500 pair of shoes because I can look like I have a $500 pair of shoes. I can look like I'm cool. I look like I made it when really in all reality, I haven't earned those shoes yet. Does that make sense? Okay, so this is a money hack. All right, let's get to the next one. All right, guys, so number four is gonna be spend on education, not spend on looking cool. This is a big one right here. I see a lot of people right now, they literally have cars leased, they have cars financed for 84, you know, 96 months. They literally have apartments that their parents co-signed on that they have nothing to do with their success. That is literally something they should be in something way less than that, and that's their parent status. You see this all around the world, okay? So I want you to invest. I, and I'm, by the way, I'm not saying that you shouldn't have nice things, but I want you to invest in yourself. The high, the highest ROI that you'll ever get. If you care about money and, and ROI, which is return on investment, there's no ROI better than yourself. ROI on real estate could be 7%. ROI on yourself could be 1,000%. You spend $1,000 on yourself, you can get 1,000% ROI. Okay, you spend $1,000 on real estate, you get 7% ROI. I'm just giving you an example. So what's the greatest ROI of all times? You, you have to bet on you. So you have to decide every dollar that I have, where should I be spending it? Spend it on you. Don't spend it on looking cool. I know a lot of people right now, they look super cool. Hey. And by the way, like it feels good in the, in, the, in, in the moment. You're like, oh dude, I'm cool. Like, look at me, I've got the car, I've got the house, I got this. But really behind the scenes, you're not building yourself to become anything great. You're never gonna build an empire. You're never gonna become, you're, build a business. You look cool on social media, but you're really getting your, 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 your ass kicked and nobody's gonna wanna be with you. And in the end, you never can build anything great. And you're only gonna get so far looking cool and over here when you really build something real, you're actually gonna go through the roof. So I just wanted to tell you that what I would tell you, spend your money on educating yourself, bet on you, the highest ROI in your entire life will always come from you. Don't spend it on looking cool. Remember, when you, when you hit that goal, when you hit that target, when you hit that quota, then you can spend some money on yourself on some cool stuff because you earned it. But most people, they haven't earned anything and they spend their money, not on themselves, they spend their money on looking cool. Does that make sense? Okay, let's get on to this very last one. All right, guys, lastly, this is gonna be number five. I put, spend your money on meal prep. Don't eat out, okay? Everybody will tell you something different. Look, I'm gonna explain this to you, it's super simple. I cook twice a week. Just like, I'm gonna tell you how I do it. I cook twice a week. I buy really healthy food. I buy chicken, turkey, fish, steak, and I cook it Every three days I do a meal prep. I literally take, it takes me two hours and I can spit out three days of food. Does that make sense? So like for breakfast, for lunch, in the afternoon, and then at dinner, like I don't even have to think. I want you to understand, I don't even have to think. The food's already there. I don't have to think, what am I gonna eat today? The food's already there. I don't have to leave and go, and go get something to eat. I don't have to order something. Dude, if you, if you think about this, how can you earn more money? Are you ready? If you go get something to eat, if you order something to eat, you're waiting on someone to give it to you, it's costing you more, it's not clean food, your brain ain't gonna operate right. And by the way, I just wanna tell you, the money perspective of it, if you go buy grilled chicken, if you go buy fish, if you go buy like grilled turkey, I'm just giving an example, and you cook that, with rice or vegetables, I'm just telling you, buy plastic containers and you can meal prep for three days and what that would have costed you in the two hours that it took you to make, and plus the way that your body will operate because of that, then you take the time that it thought about what am I gonna eat today, how many times you had to stop to go eat, and then literally what it costs for the food, this is gonna end up being cheaper and I'm more productive with my time by doing the meal prep. And by the way, like I wanna say something, if you're in your 20s and this doesn't have anything to do with money, has to do with just common sense. You're a walking billboard. You're in your 20s. When you're in your 20s, it shows like how disciplined you are by how your body is. It shows how much you care about yourself and how much you keep your word and your promise to yourself and how much people can trust you based on how good a shape you're in, okay? How can you ask someone to trust you if you look like you don't trust yourself? How can you ask someone to believe that you're disciplined and you're gonna follow through on your promises if it doesn't look like you keep your promises to yourself? How, how can someone think that you're gonna take care of them if you don't take care of yourself? 
It just, it just doesn't work, okay? So understand the, the meal prep part will also keep you healthy. It'll also keep your brain function really good, but it'll also keep you lean. And by the way, one of the biggest problems that I see is that people, even if they did get to save a little bit of money by eating off the dollar menu at McDonald's, dude, you're gonna end up not looking like you wanna look. And I promise you that's all just gonna lead to depression, which is totally gonna ruin everything you have in your life. And it's gonna make you out of shape. You're not gonna look attractive. You're not gonna end up with a, with a, a hot girl or guy. Um, you're not going to be able to, you, you know, like what, you know, you attract what you attract, right? Like who you become will determine what you attract. And if you want to be a leader in this world and you want to lead something and become something great and be an example for other people, like step one is self-leadership. So like, how are you leading yourself? And if you lead yourself well, other people will want to look up to you. They'll, they'll, you'll be the example. They'll want to be like you. And now you'll lead them. Where do you think that'll lead you on a financial standpoint? Okay, so in a world right now where most people don't follow these, these processes, these five money tips will help you big time on building your best life in your 20s. And by the way, listen, if you guys are watching this and you're like, okay, so like, how do I plug into more of this? How do I, by the way, how do I plug into something that's real? Like not just information, not just like education, not just like Andy sharing tips with me. How do I plug into like an inner circle? How do I plug into true coaching um, if you watch my content and you're like, dude, Andy, I want you to personally mentor me. I want you to push me to the next level. Andy, I'm here in life. This is the play that I'm running. I'm ready to run a new play. Okay. In the description box below on this YouTube video, you're going to go down there and it's going to say coach with Andy Elliott. And I want you to know, you can see if you qualify, this is how it works. It's very easy. Okay. And by the way, like I'm kicking ass in life. I would love to make you the greatest leader on planet earth. I believe in people more than anyone else has ever believed in them. I'm an underdog. Okay, so I believe in underdogs. I believe in people that come from nothing end up with the most. I believe if you've been through trial, tribulation, struggles, and hardship, I believe God brought you all through all that to get you ready for what he's gonna bring you through next. I believe in all that. So if what I'm saying to you is you're like, man, I can resonate with this. Yeah, Andy, I look up to you. I would love to be pushed by you. There's a description box below. You go there, you click on it, enter your name, your phone number, your email. It's very simple. You're gonna answer about eight questions. I'm very, very, it means a lot to me how you answer these eight questions. It tells me what your motives are and where you stand at as a person. What are your core values and what do you want out of life? And if by the way that you answer these eight questions, I'm like, dude, that's the kind of person that I want to push. Let's go take over the world together. I'll reach out to you in the next 24 hours. Okay. So guys, I love you. I hope you have a blessed day. I hope this video have brought some value. Even if only one of these tips you end up using them, I promise you'll be far ahead of everyone else. If you can use all of them, well, you're going to kill it. And then at the end, I just talked about this mentorship. If that's something you want to do and really take yourself to another level in self-development, who you become determines what you'll earn. Okay. Always building your self-value and your self-worth. Um, is, is how you end up going really far in life. And so you gotta invest in yourself. Remember, that's the highest ROI. If you're gonna put your money anywhere, put it in yourself. So guys, I love you, have a blessed day. I'll see you in the next video.